Penny Wong's recent comments about the idea of Palestinian statehood has, of course, sparked widespread criticism. Labor's political posturing about the ongoing conflict is having a ripple effect locally in Victoria. Joining me live in the studio is Victoria Deputy Opposition Leader David Southwick. David, thank you for your time today. Really Morning, appreciate Holly. it. Um, let's first start by discussing, I guess, what kind of impact is this having on the Jewish community here in Victoria? Mm. Yeah, so we've seen, uh, certainly in Victoria, hatred against Jews at, at an all-time low. Uh, and a lot of uh, Jews don't feel safe. We've had uh, just an incident today where one of the schools have said that they won't be attending the Anzac Day service uh, because of not feeling safe going there, which is horrific when you think of Sir John Monash, one of uh, arguably Australia's um, greatest soldiers being Jewish, and uh, children from a Jewish day school can't attend an Anzac Day service. And that's the kind of thing that's happening everywhere. But unfortunately, when you have the likes of Penny Wong and Anthony Albanese, trying to politically posture to win votes, um, ultimately, uh, Jews get targeted locally. And you know, nobody wants what we're seeing in terms of the war and the conflict, but it was a war that was started by terrorists back in October, and se uh, October 7. And it seems like certainly many uh, want to just forget about how this has happened uh, and, and are more concerned about how many votes they might win um, in, in a city, in the Sydney and other areas as well. And we can't allow the Jewish community to be political pawns as part of electoral benefit from the government. And I think certainly uh, the wider community have started to see through the true, true colours of a government that is more concerned about votes rather than ensuring that communities are kept safe. Do you see that Penny Wong's recent comments are essentially rewarding terrorism? Well, absolutely. I mean, uh, to think that... Uh, the only way you can uh, enter at a, a, a negotiate, negotiation table is to kill people. Um, nobody should be rewarded for that. Uh, and, um, and Penny Wong has been effectively um, caught short in terms of uh, trying to politi politically posture at the expense of um, the Jewish community and Israel as well. I mean, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing the situation unfold in Israel uh, it is very, very difficult for everybody. And the last thing we should be doing is playing politics with this back home. David, I want to get your thoughts on something. There are reports um, suggesting that there's going to be an international economic blockade, if you yeah. will, um, an anti-Israel protest right around the world. Reports that it's going to start here in Melbourne next Monday. Um, how concerning is this? How dangerous is this? We know the movement is mm. gaining momentum. Uh, what are you hearing? Yeah, this is really concerning. These are extremists. Uh, these people are not discussing with police what they intend to do. They intend to shut down Melbourne. Uh, it's a global movement, but if you look at their videos, the first city that they're actually targeting is Melbourne. So uh, whether it be our ports, whether it be our uh, Westgate um, bridges and other uh, infrastructure, but not only is it, does it inconvenience people, it's a safety concern, and, and there's also an economic fallout to all of this as well. Uh, in a cost of living crisis, we're shutting down ports, we're not allowing people to um, get uh, businesses uh, to do about their daily thing. And the government is allowing these kinds of things to happen. We had move on laws which said that if people blockaded businesses, they would be moved on and arrested. We don't have those powers at the moment. I've written to the police minister today to plead with them to ensure that these protesters are not able to shut down Melbourne. There should be consequences. These people should be arrested if they intend to shut down Melbourne and cause safety concerns to Melburnians and Victorians that just want to go about their daily lives. It's an incredibly divisive um, yeah. topic at the moment and we we could keep talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I want to get yeah, your thoughts sure. on some other things, yeah. other things more locally as yeah, well. Sure. In Victoria, something that's been headlining is uh, talks about Indigenous exemptions for land tax and treaty. Um, this is incredibly divisive. Is this really what Victorians want at the moment? Yeah, everybody is equal through, by the law. That's how we should be operating. And we can't have a race-based taxation system. So what the first thing we would be asking is Jacinta Ellen to rule this out. Uh, we know that if you talk to most homeowners, most landowners, uh, our taxation system in Victoria is the highest. We're seeing many people struggling and having to sell their investment properties. Uh, these are mum and dad investment, investment properties because of things like escalating land taxes. So we've got to fix that. Uh, but we can't have a situation where we're saying we're going to have a one rule of taxation system for one group of people and a different rule for everybody else. I think equality is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Everybody is equal before the law and a race-based taxation system 
should never be allowed to happen and the government should rule this out. But in the last state election, Liberals were in support of the treaty. Why is that? Why the change yeah, of so, now? So um, that was very much about trying to understand um, how we can help, um, if you like, close the gap with, uh, with, with Indigenous um, the Indigenous community. And we should be looking at doing that. There are lots of practical things that we can do, but this is not one of them. Uh, there, there are lots of issues in terms of um, too many of our Indigenous community are, um, are ending up in prison, the drug and alcohol problems. There are a lot of things that we can um, be addressing. But again, you know, we've ruled out a treaty certainly after what we're seeing in terms of the, um, the referendum, certainly what we're starting to hear in terms of what the government's looking at trying to do in terms of um, ultimately um, putting one group of people against another. Um, we've got to close the gap, but we certainly shouldn't be treating one group of people differently than another group of people.